What's up, guys? So um, today I'm, I'm entering day three of fasting. And um, quick recap, um, I, my my aches and pains, I'd say, are 60% gone, 70% gone. Like, I, like for instance, my shoulder was hurting a, a lot. And I have to, like, really move it around to, like, figure out at which point does it hurt, you know, what, in terms of the range of motion. Um, the side of my knee, um, I only notice it, I think, here and there when walking down the stairs. I almost don't notice it at all. At all. Uh, my lower back is um, has is not as tight as it's been. It's been pretty painful. I um, I have noticed it's harder to go to sleep because I'm very energetic. Like my energy is through the roof right now. Um, just so much energy, and it's actually giving me like a little bit of like what I would call like physical anxiety because I don't know what to do with the energy. And I've been blowing through my work um, faster than I honestly I have in a long time. I've gotten I've gotten more done in the past three days. Um, than I normally do in an entire week. And I, I've worked from 6 a.m. to now it's been over 12 hours uh, of work and um, still going. So that's interesting. Um, bouts of hunger here and there, but for the most part, I feel amazing, to be honest. Um, it's just funny and hard trying to figure out what I do when I'm not eating because I typically spend about three hours a day eating. And um, so I have to fill that time, which has been interesting. But anyway, we're going to watch this video today about Andrew Huberman. And I mean... Um, uh, by Andrew Huberman, Huberman. He's one of my favorites. As you can see, my speech, that's the one thing that has been hard, that hasn't improved um, throughout fasting. And I'm sure it's a function of my glucose levels. Um, so I have to like really focus to make sure I'm articulating and not potentially slurring my speech just a little bit or like messing up my words. Um, so anyway, I found this video by Huberman. Um, it says, how fasting impacts your ability to focus. I don't know if that uh, means in a negative or positive way. I feel like my ability to focus is awesome right now, but there are other things related to um, my my uh, cognitive functioning or whatever whatever you want to call it that I have noticed that are different when I'm fasting. So I'm really interested interested to see what he's gonna gonna say about this. So let's check it out. Your ability to focus, and in fact, your ability of neurons to encode specific information in your environment, that is to represent what's out there in the world, is actually related to your blood glucose level. Now, here I'm setting aside the discussion of ketosis and, and ketogenic diets for the moment. But there's a beautiful study that was published in Neuron not long ago that showed that the tuning, that is the precision with which neurons in the brain represent things in our environment. Just a quick translation for anyone that uh, didn't study biology or, or, or have a PhD in something science related. What he's saying is that your body's ability, your brain's ability to accurately reflect what it's seeing in, in real life, you know, in your brain and how you perceive it. Um, is correlated with uh, your glucose levels. I don't know if that's in a positive or negative way, but let's see. Is actually much greater when there is sufficient glucose in the brain. Translated into English, this means that when we are fasted or when our blood glucose is very low, we aren't able to perceive and think about things as clearly. Now, there's a twist to this, however. Many people who practice intermittent fasting, and I should say I practice a sort of pseudo-intermittent fasting. I generally eat my meals between the hours of 11 a.m. and 8 p.m., although sometimes there's some wiggle around that. Occasionally, I have an early breakfast. I'm not super rigid about it. But I know there are a number of people who are doing longer fasts or they're eating in a six-hour window. We did an entire episode about fasting. You can, again, find that at HubermanLab.com. We'll likely have Sachin Panda, who's an expert in intermittent fasting, on the podcast. Intermittent fasting has a lot of different potential benefits. For some people, it's a convenient way to restrict their calories. For other people, it's a convenient way to avoid eating. That is, it's easier to not eat than to eat a small portion. So they opt for intermittent fasting. I'm that way. And he brings up a good point. He said some people, it's easier for them to avoid eating um, than just eating small amounts. I'm definitely one of those people. And I spoke to a lady, I can't remember her name right now, but she's the foremost expert on happiness. But she talks about how some people are she calls them abstainers where they perform better you know if they have to stop a bad habit or whatever just not doing it at all like stopping drinking or whatever it is and some people um, have the ability to moderate they're moderators um going cold turkey doesn't work for them but just having a little bit works for them uh i'm definitely uh an all-in or all-out type of guy um so i can relate to that that's interesting interesting that he brought it up and so on and so forth. But one of the things that you hear very often is that some people like being fasted because they like the clarity of mind that it provides. 
Here's the situation. Neurons, unless you're in a ketogenic diet, really thrive on glucose. They love glucose. And as I mentioned before, your ability to think and perceive things is actually enhanced by having sufficient glucose in your bloodstream. So why would it be that some people experience a heightened state of mental clarity when they are fasted? I've certainly experienced that before. Well, I should say that provided you're well hydrated enough and you have enough electrolytes in your system, what tends to happen is that when you ingest food, there's a shift in your nervous system towards so-called parasympathetic mode. That is the more relaxed, you probably heard it as rest and digest, although it does other things, a more relaxed mode that can indeed make us very sleepy. If we have too many carbohydrates, it actually can make us quite sleepy. However, if we have any food, if we have enough of it, that is if our gut is full, it diverts blood to our gut and we become sleepy and we can't focus as well. So a lot of people really like fasting in the state of being fasted for focus and concentration because they don't have as much of that parasympathetic activation. They're just not as sleepy. And in fact, under those conditions, half as much caffeine will give you just as much lift as twice as much caffeine will give you on a full belly of pasta. And that's just the way that caffeine interacts with blood glucose. So what I'd like you to imagine is if you had a measure of focus from zero to 10, these are arbitrary units, 10 being maximally focused and zero being not focused at all. Imagine a U-shaped function, right? where if you're very fasted, you're going to have a high degree of focus and concentration. But then if you ingest some food and your belly is full, your focus and concentration is reduced. But having enough blood glucose and maybe even elevated blood glucose will increase cognitive function. So there are two ends of the spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, blood glucose is relatively low and you're fasted and you can think and behave in a very concentrated way. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have a lot of blood glucose, or I should say sufficient blood glucose. You never want your blood glucose to be too high. And that allows your neurons to encode and perceive and basically allow you to think really clearly. So you sort of have to pick your condition. What do you want for your bouts of focus and concentration? I actually do both. So what I do is, as I mentioned before, I eat my meal sometime around 11 a.m., my first meal typically, unless I'm very hungry when I wake up. And so I will do my workout and one bout of focused work. I always think of this as my hard work early in the day. And I do that fasted. I'll be consuming water with electrolytes, maybe element or other electrolytes, maybe some caffeine as well in the form of yerba mate or coffee. That's my- By the way, it's qu quick note on his uh, point about caffeine. I have noticed that- um, if I drink my normal cup of coffee that I, I tend to have, uh, at least when I'm drinking coffee, um, over the past few days, um, I get like super jittery, jittery, super fast. Um, and today it really caught up with me. Um, so definitely like if you're having coffee on your fast, just, you know, have half the amount you would normally have, wait a little bit, see how it affects you. And then maybe go back for more. First focus bout of 90 minutes or less. That is essentially done fasted. And then I'll eat. And then I do notice after I eat, I actually have a diminished capacity to focus. But then again, in the afternoon, I will do another 90 minute bout of focus. And I'll talk about some of the tools I use to make sure that that bout of focus is optimal for getting the most amount of focused work done, whether or not it's mental work or physical work, although I tend to do my physical work early in the day and my mental work both early and late in the day. So to make this very simple or as simple as I can for you, being fasted, is great for focus and concentration, provided you're not thinking about food the entire time. And being fed is terrific for focus and concentration, actually can improve neuronal function, provided that you didn't eat too much food. So one way to manage this is if you're going to have a lunch to make sure that you don't stuff yourself at lunch, that you're not overeating and to not get quite so full that you push your nervous system into this parasympathetic mode and make it hard to focus in the afternoon. I know a lot of people experience a dip or even a crash in energy in the afternoon that make it really hard to focus. For that reason, I'll just remind people of a tool I've talked about many times before, which is based on the biology of adenosine and caffeine, et cetera, which is to delay your first caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking up. I know that can be painful for certain people. I violate that rule when I'm working out very early in the morning. I'll drink my caffeine before my workout, which often occurs within you know 30 to 60 minutes of waking. But in general, unless I'm working out very early, I will ingest my caffeine 90 to 120 minutes after I wake up. So again, I want to emphasize that if you hear somebody out there say, being fasted is optimal for focus and concentration, well, that is true in one context. 
and perhaps ideal for a certain part of the day. And other people will say, no, you know, neurons run on glucose. You need glucose in your bloodstream in order to get those neurons to be tuned. That is to respond with electrical activity in the optimal way when you're reading something or when you're trying to perform exercise. Well, that's also true. And of course you can incorporate both. I, in fact, as I just described, incorporate both fasted states and fed states in order to optimize my concentration and focus. Thank you, Huberman. Um, so two things uh, we'll, we'll get back to. Um, I'm really curious. He didn't, he, uh, I learned a lot in that video and I'm glad you heard some of it because these are all the things I've always known inherently about fasting, but I've never heard someone break it down. Um, what he didn't talk about is why your, um, your focus is so elevated and why you feel so sharp when you're fasted. Um, so I'd love to understand what's happening in the body. Um, and then secondly, he um, talked a little bit, little bit about ketosis and the ketogenic diet at the beginning. And he said, that we're going to put that to the side. And so I'm wondering, I would assume so, um, but I'm wondering um, with the ketogenic diet and, and when your body's in ketosis, is, is it producing enough glucose to keep up with the glucose demands of your brain um, when it's in a kind of where, when it needs, needs to be in a hyper-focused um, mode? So um, I'll uh, definitely do some research and find some videos that shed a little bit of light on that. Um, because I'm now transitioning from the three-day fast into um, the carnivore diet, which should put me in a perpetual ketogenic stage, I would assume. And um, that I'll be very curious about that. All right. I'll check you guys next time, and I'll be celebrating tomorrow.